Over the years on this channel, I've talked about high speed sync versus ND filters and why I use one over the other in my off camera flash photography. But today, Sony announced the Sony A9 Mark III and that has a global shutter. So if I were to get that camera and use that feature, I would no longer have to worry about high speed sync or ND filters. I'm actually curious if you guys prefer high speed sync over ND filters. Let me know in the comments and also like this video right now while I talk about today's sponsor, which is Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography, and audio customers for almost 50 years now. Their motto is everyone is a creator and you do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done. I personally shop at Adorama for both the great deals and products I use and recommend, but also the great customer service on those products as well. If you find yourself interested in the A9 or any other product that I might talk about in today's video, check out the links that will be in the description area below and be sure to use those links if you decide to order. If you don't know what a global shutter is, that's perfectly fine. I learned about it a couple years ago when I was learning about features that would be helpful for flash photography. And then I forgot about it until recently when Sony announced the E9 Mark III. The reason why I'm very excited about this global shutter feature is because, like I said earlier, I would no longer have to worry about high speed sync or ND filters whenever I take photos outside in bright sunlight. It's very technical, but all I have to know is that when it comes to using cameras like we do right now that don't have global shutter, your camera shutter opens and then it closes. And because of the way that operates, the biggest drawback to using high speed sync though is that you lose a lot of power in your lighting. You lose efficiency and you also might have a little bit more chance of overheating and the battery might die a little bit faster than if you didn't use high speed sync. In order to avoid all those different drawbacks and use the full potential of your lighting, you would then need to use an ND filter in order to use that wide aperture and bright sunlight, but those also have their own different drawbacks. If you get a cheap ND filter, then you might have a color cast. And if you get a cheap variable ND filter, then you might have a cross pattern in your photos. And then you also have to worry about getting the specific size of the ND filter for your lens. And that might not fit another lens that you have. But my point is, is that there's a lot of different drawbacks to ND filters and high speed sync and global shutter, the global shutter will effectively eliminate those issues. If I want to use a very fast shutter outside in the bright sunlight and use the maximum potential of my lighting, then I'm going to be able to finally do that without any sort of extra hassle of worrying about adding an ND filter or like I personally experienced dropping my ND filter down a bridge and into a river and it was a $130 ND filter as well. Well, my point is that the global shutter will eliminate those issues and it's gonna be a much happier experience when you use off camera flash outside. There are of course other benefits of using a global shutter in terms of video specifically, eliminating any sort of rolling shutter effect. But I wanted to touch on the off camera flash aspect of the global shutter because it's really game changing. And I hate that term game changing. I've actually only used it once or maybe twice before it dropped my entire YouTube career or whatever you want to call it. So this is going to be the third time now. I think I saw some people post today from the event that happened in New York from Sony that they took some photos at 180 thousandth of a second, which is insane. And they used it with flash and the flash synced, which is again, it's really honestly insane. I can't wait to get this camera and show you guys how I would be utilizing it in my work and why it's going to be beneficial. But the camera is a bit expensive at $6,000. But if you guys are interested in getting it yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description area below. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this camera. Is it something that you think is exciting or you think, you know, it's no big deal. I honestly can't accept any sort of other answer other than it being crazy and insane and exciting. But of course, I'm very open to your guys' different opinions. So let me know in the comment section below what those are. I want to say one last thanks to Adorama for sponsoring this video. But for now, take care guys and I'll see you in the very next video.